After the surprise success of District 9 in 2009, Neil Blomkamp was the new darling of the film industry. From the fallout that was a failed attempt to get a movie based on the Halo video game franchise off the ground, came the original, intriguing, and thrilling film about aliens stranded on Earth. The film was nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Picture, and legitimized Blomkamp as an innovative storyteller. Blomkamp leveraged the success of District 9 to land a much larger budget for his next effort, 2013's Classism Sci-Fi Elysium. It was met with moderate critical and commercial success. He followed that up with a humbler and more intimate Chappie in 2015, which failed to impress critics or turn a profit, despite a cast with sci-fi pedigree, including Sigourney Weaver. Though it seemed like the bloom was off the rose for Blomkamp, he had proved himself capable enough to be tied to the iconic Alien franchise. Teasing his involvement on his Instagram in February of 2015, the month before Chappie's release, Blomkamp was excited to work with Sigourney Weaver again, posting later that month in a since-deleted post, So, I think it's officially my next film. Concept art by Jeffrey Thorens would continue to be released in the years to follow. The deal with 20th Century Fox was confirmed by multiple sources. But, according to Alien series creator Ridley Scott, the Blomkamp-helmed film never made it past the pitch phase, seemingly superseded by 2017's Alien Covenant and 2024's Alien Romulus. After failed flirtations with Halo, Alien, and an adaptation of the sci-fi novel The Gone World, Neil Blomkamp seemed like the poster child for canned sci-fi films. But Alien was not the only iconic 80s sci-fi franchise that Blomkamp was tied to. In July of 2018, he signed on to direct RoboCop Returns, a direct continuation of the original cyberpunk classic. RoboCop, directed by Paul Verhoeven and written by Edward Neumeyer and Michael Miner, released in 1987. It features Peter Weller as police officer Alex Murphy, who through tragedy is transformed into the titular part man, part machine, RoboCop. The film is still beloved nearly 40 years later, its influential and innovative approach to cyberpunk sci-fi action is equal parts witty and gritty, memorable and quotable, I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> poignant and provocative. It was a great success upon release and has grown to iconic status in the years since. Many attempts have been made to recapture the original film's lightning in a bottle, including Robocop the Animated Series, which was presented as a youth-friendly adaptation of RoboCop in 1988. The format and target young audience necessitated a sterilization of the concept that distanced the animated series from its source movie. Between the ambiguity and poor quality, the animated series failed to resonate with audiences, and it was cancelled after one season. Next came a direct sequel in 1990's RoboCop 2, directed by Irvin Kirshner and written by Wallen Green and renowned comic book writer Frank Miller. Frank Miller's original script was deemed unfilmable and was later adapted into comic book form as Frank Miller's Robocop in 2003. It seeks to justify Robocop's return to his flat, robotic personality with exhaustion and malfunction. Drug Lord Kane and Adherent Hobb are not present. Dr. Julian Fax is functionally replaced by the exaggerated Dr. Margaret Love. Replacing Kane as the original Robocop 2 is the violent and cruel Kong, who leads other rehabs, much like those present in Robocop 3, against Murphy. The rehabs kill Sergeant Warren Reed and pin it on Robocop. Later, facing death at the hands of the original Robocop, Dr. Love transports her consciousness into Robocop 2 before a final showdown. The ending has Robocop leading a revolt against the OCP, akin to what happens in Robocop 3. Though hype enabled it to make nearly as much money as its predecessor, on a similar budget, the final version of RoboCop 2 was not well received by critics or fans. There are some memorable action sequences, but the common sentiment was that the sequel lacked the nuanced satire of the first, and leaned too heavily into the gratuity. Whatever the criticism, the first film set an impossibly high standard that RoboCop 2 failed to meet. 1993's RoboCop 3, directed by Fred Decker and written by him and the returning Frank Miller, was an even greater departure from the spirit of the first film. Peter Weller, whose performance as Alex Murphy slash RoboCop played a crucial role in the success and iconic status of the first film, did not return for the 1993 threequel. The film moved to a PG-13 rating to appeal to a wider audience, foregoing a lot of the thematic grit and violence that made the first RoboCop great. 
be loyal as a puppy. Robocop 3 presented a one-dimensional hero and ridiculous antagonist and lacked the polish, intrigue, and action that people associated with the first entry in the franchise. 1994 saw the release of the live-action Robocop television show, with the original writers returning for the pilot. It discarded the story of the two sequel films, with the pilot loosely adapting a proposed Robocop 2 script, but persisted the tone of Robocop 3, befitting the television format. Coming off a 1991 bankruptcy and the threequel's poor performance, Orion Pictures welcomed an infusion of cash from Sky Vision Entertainment for the television rights to Robocop. Richard Eden's lead performance did not compare favorably to Peter Weller's, and the show was criticized as bland, predictable, and cheesy, with production values not befitting its untenable budget. The show had its fans, but poor marketing and time slots contributed to a cancellation after one season. Now what, Tin Man? Police brutality? <laughs> Robocop Alpha Commando was another attempt at a Robocop animated television show that ran from 1998 to 99 better produced than the 1988 show, with a banger of an intro song. It unfortunately deviated even further from the source material, including turning Robocop into a glorified Inspector Gadget. Four-part miniseries, Robocop Prime Directives, was released in 2001. The tone and themes of the miniseries were more in line with the expectations set by the 1987 original, but the lead performance was distractingly different. Please vacate the premises immediately. And budgetary considerations prevented the visuals from living up to expectations. That would be the last we would see of Robocop, until the 2014 reboot. 2014's Robocop was produced in the mold of a modern superhero movie, accessible and with well-modernized visual effects. Where the movie struggled, is in merely touching on the themes that the original faced head-on and not generating the same sympathy for the titular character. The 2014 remake offered plenty to like without offering anything to love. By most accounts, no subsequent offering was able to reproduce the magic of the original Robocop, which made the 2018 proposal all the more pivotal. Neil Blomkamp cited Robocop director Paul Verhoeven as an influence, and his knack for using violence as a vehicle for social commentary made him seem like a natural fit. Justin Rhodes was brought on to adapt the Corporate Wars draft previously leveraged for the pilot of the 1994 television show. In the script, Robocop is destroyed via cannon by a desperate criminal, to be rediscovered 25 years later in a very different society, one divided into two classes based on access to luxurious Plex system. In their draft, Robocop is largely a pawn in the hands of government and corporate interests, before wrestling control to foist a terrorist plot. The draft that's available to the public is certainly in early stages and unpolished, and it's unclear how much refinement has since occurred. Neil Blomkamp told Deadline that the original definitely had a massive effect on him, and he consistently stated that his reboot would be faithful to the original in approach and story, that he would have tried to basically simulate Paul Verhoeven's directing style. In a series of since-deleted tweets from June 2019, Blomkamp gave the progress report, script is being written, going well. Imagine watching Verhoeven do a follow-up film, and later that same day, that the suit would 1 million percent match the original. Then, within a few weeks, he would post that he's no longer attached to the project, owing to schedules. He implied that MGM didn't want to wait for him to finish the horror thriller Demonic. Abe Forsyth, hot off 2019's Little Monsters, was brought in as a replacement. The film would remain in development hell before Forsyth would officially declare it dead in October 2023, saying, there's an element in the script which will stop it from ever seeing the light of day. After Chappie, besides teasing involvement in two iconic sci-fi franchises, Neil Blomkamp focused on short films before releasing Demonic in 2021. His next effort, 2023's Gran Turismo, based on a true story, was considered his strongest effort since District 9. His next film is alien abduction thriller They Found Us, starring 2014 Robocop's Joel Kinnaman. Perhaps if Blomkamp had been able to apply the deft hand present in District 9 and Gran Turismo, along with his immense respect for the creation of the original Robocop film to Robocop Returns, the result could have been something great. Neil Blomkamp's journey with the Robocop franchise stands as a testament to the challenges and opportunities that come with revitalizing an iconic character and reflect the delicate balance between innovation and nostalgia. As we look back at the various attempts to breathe new life into Robocop, it becomes clear that the journey is 
as much about the resilience of the character as it is about the filmmakers who undertake that challenge. Despite the hurdles faced by Blomkamp and others, the allure of Robocop persists. Since Amazon's acquisition of MGM Studios in March of 2022, they've stated that Robocop is a priority property to be developed into a new television and film series. So, even if Neil Blomkamp isn't at the helm, fans can be excited that more Robocop seems to be on the horizon. The legacy of the franchise endures, reminding us that the intersection of technology, society, and humanity will forever be at the heart of this beloved and enduring science fiction tale. Better alive, you are coming with me. 